Hi, this is Dr. Purcell. Let's take a couple of minutes here to just talk about medication errors, how we can prevent them and what we need to do when they do occur. First word that we need to acknowledge when we talk about medication errors is the word preventable. Every medication error is preventable. It's actually something that we call a never event. Medication errors should never happen. But the problem is we have human factors involved and humans make mistakes. Uh, but we're going to talk about a few things that you can do as a human to help prevent and minimize the chance that you might make a medication error. Medication errors are an extremely common cause of adverse health care outcomes. And this has been known for the entirety of this century. Since the turn into the 20s, the 2000s, there have been multiple research efforts and patient safety initiatives to try and reduce the amount of harm happening to patients because of medication errors. As you will see, uh, as you explore this module, Unfortunately, we haven't made a whole lot of progress in this area. There are certain drugs that are more commonly involved with severe medication errors, and these are typically noted, noted to be high alert drugs. These are drugs that are central nervous system drugs, anticoagulants, and chemotherapy drugs. These are going to require two registered nurses to check that it is the actual correct dose, it is the correct drug, it is the correct patient, and all the other rights that go with uh, medication administration. There are basically about four kinds of error. Now, no error is actually an error. It's also known as a near miss. Although circumstances or events occurred that could have led to an error, it is very important to report near misses within your institution or facility because it signals a lapse in safety protocols. And we have to address that so that we don't get to any of the other ones that are listed here, the, um, the three that are actual medication errors. So we need to have a culture within a facility and institution that's called a just culture so that people are not um, admonished or afraid to come forward and report errors or near misses. The only way we can improve our safety systems is to know what's actually happening when there's a problem. The other types of medication errors are errors that cause no harm. So maybe a drug was missed, but the patient didn't have any harm. Uh, that's a drug error. Or you gave um, an extra dose of antibiotic instead of just one dose, but no harm came to the patient. There are errors that cause harm. And then the ultimate is a medication error that results in the death of a patient. How do you as a nurse go into your practice and start administering medications with a mindset of safety? One of the very first things you have to commit to doing every time you're handling medications. And even if it, you've been taking care of this patient for two weeks and giving the same medications to them for two weeks, you always, I just always focus on safety. Check the medication order against what you have in your hand and you're about to administer to a patient three times before you give the drug. If it's a high alert drug, you need to have another RN checking that with you. Always adhere to the basic rights of medication administration. Consistently apply these rights and you will help to prevent a medication error. Is it the right drug? Is it the right dose? Is it the right route? Is it the right time? Is it the right patient? Um, there are, if you're giving IV medications, there's going to be more about the right rate at which you push it, the right dilution, the right, um, uh, if it has to be reconstituted, the right uh, fluid for that. So there are many, many rights depending on the medication um, for 
giving a topical like a patch is it in the right location is another right but the basic ones is right drug right dose right route right patient right time and and you check those three times always assess your patient before you give any medications you should never go in to give meds when you have not already done your shift assessment on somebody and depending on the drug that you're giving you may need to do further assessment on the individual. If you're going to give um, some cardio, cardiac glycosides, you're going to need to check an apical pulse for one minute. That's just an example. Um, always use two patient identifiers to make sure you have the right patient. If you did not prepare or draw up the medication, you do not give it. You'd never have someone hand you a pill or a capsule that is in a cup with no wrapper and no way to, could, to confirm what it is and or a syringe with a drug in it and no label and say, here, go give it. That is an absolute never event. You never give something you didn't prepare. Um, efforts that help to minimize errors are the um, communication that occurs between prescribers and nurses. So most hospitals and facilities will not allow verbal orders at all. And when there's a telephone order, you must follow the, the uh, feedback, the, the readback process where you're on the phone and the prescriber is changing some medications based on what you called about, or they call you and they wanna start a new medication. Either way, you repeat the order back to the prescriber, you spell the drug and name out loud, and you speak slowly and clearly so that the both of you know you're talking about the same drug. And you actually should repeat the name of the, the individual for whom the order is being written. And then the best practice is for the prescriber to put the indication, the reason next to each drug so that if you see something that says, uh, this is a drug that's given for cardiac dysrhythmias, and you're taking care of a patient who doesn't have cardiac dysrhythmias, that's a phone call to the prescriber to say, let's clarify this. I wanna make sure this is actually supposed to be for this patient. Again, never assume anything about items that are not specified in a drug order. So if the route is missing or the dose doesn't seem right and they wrote 120 milligrams and you know it's really supposed to be micrograms, you can't assume that. You have to get that clarified by the prescriber. Never hesitate to question a medication order if there's any doubt. Um, and this is a big reason for medication errors is that the nurse just was afraid to contact the prescriber, didn't wanna take the time. Uh, perhaps the prescriber has been uh, incivil in the past and that kind of keeps them from wanting to call. Doesn't matter, you need to call. Don't try to decipher uh, an order that's been written in handwriting that is illegible. If you have an error based on that, it's your fault. So always call the prescriber and get clarification. Never use a trailing zero with medication orders. So that means we don't write 1.0 milligrams. We write one milligram because that zero could be misread and it looks like 10 milligrams instead of a 1.0 milligrams. This is a safety precaution. With computer entry, it really helps because um, we aren't seeing people do this with their handwriting, but there are still some places where handwritten orders are done. And if you're taking a telephone order and you write it incorrectly, it could get put into the computer wrong. So we don't use trailing zeros and we always use leading zeros. So instead of 0.25 milligrams, we use 0 0.25 milligrams to prevent it from being misread as 25 milligrams. If you're wondering how you're going to remember the, the rule with zeros, here's something that'll help. We like to say nurses are always leading and never trailing. So you always use a leading zero before the decimal point but never a trailing zero after the decimal point. The other very important aspect of preventing medication errors is that you must listen to your patient, their family, if they have any concerns that the medications you're giving them aren't right. Stop 
talk to them, double check, honor that because they know, and that might be actually when you catch a medication error, is because the patient said, you know, my pill is normally purple and this one is green. And you need to take a step back. It could just be because it's a different manufacturer than what the patient gets from at home versus what's in the hospital. But you need to check that out and advocate for your patient to make sure you actually have the right drug. And then always confirm any allergies or non-allergies that the patient has and their identification. In the event that there should be a medication error or a near miss, every facility, every hospital has a policy and procedure of how that needs to be reported. And it needs to be reported. Um, never, you should not worry that you're going to get fired or lose your license. That is called an unjust culture. A just culture recognizes that mistakes happen and we wanna do the right thing and learn from them. So there will be a procedure and a policy on how to report it wherever it is you're working. You do it per their policy. And you have to tell the prescriber and you need to tell nursing management. You need to tell the prescriber because they need to know if something else needs to be done. What is the condition of their patient? And then nursing management needs to know because there may be changes that need to be made uh, to a, a process um, that's happening. And you may need to tell the patient. Nowadays, we usually, um, that is part of the policy and procedure with the prescriber and a nurse manager present, they usually tell the patient family about the error. Then you have to document this and it's only the facts. You don't put in that, well, I got distracted because the, I had to answer the phone because the unit secretary was at lunch and housekeeping came by and moved all my meds so they could clean the counter and then they got mixed up about who they belong to. They don't want any of that. You only put what you gave, what the actual dose should have been or what you should, should have given or not given, any changes you observed and that you notified the prescri prescriber and any follow-up orders. And that's the end. I truly hope that you can have a long and wonderful career with no medication errors ever. Good luck, guys.